Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Upgrades. I'm Jeremy Knoll. And I'm John Suarez. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the Elven Empire deck from Kaldheim, headed up by Lathril, Blade of the Elves. Uh, so Lathril is a very solid new elf card. Um, two black, green, two, three, menace. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens, and you can tap it and tap 10 untapped elves you control to each opponent loses 10 life. And you gain 10 life. This yeah, is that's very, very, very powerful. This is a silly, silly card. It's so yes. good. Um, I mean, we recently just had Abomination of Lanawar added to, you know, into the mix. And this, along with it, just, it, it's so good. Like, Abomination of Lanawar is in this deck. And I think people are just going to automatically, if they've already made an Abomination deck from, you know, Zendikar Rising... They might just take buy this deck and switch it out for Lathril just because it's so ridiculous. Or just yeah. put Lathril right in because both of those are like two solid black green elf legendary elf creatures in as many sets is, yeah. is really, really nice. Um, as we've said before, uh, and we said in the other episode for this set, uh, yeah, these these decks for the, the most recent like sets of two for sets, uh, the commander decks are very solid. And this one is no no exception. There's a lot of really good cards in this, so Find for sure. It. I mean, elves are elves are very very powerful. They're normally pretty cheap, which is nice, uh, but you're still getting a lot of value out of this deck. You know, these I think for the most part they're mostly twenty dollars. For the yeah, I think about twenty dollars. Sometimes even cheaper. Yeah, sometimes you can find them bundled for you know two for thirty five or less. Yeah. So yeah, if you can for basically the price of one of the like. You know, sets of four and five, one deck, you can get two brand new ones. It's it's yeah. very solid. You don't get as many of the the new, you know, created four commander cards in them, but sometimes those can get a lot of hand, and uh, having only a yes. couple is actually pretty good. But otherwise, you still get very good value out of the decks. Um, so let's dive in. We're, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. If you watched our other one about Phantom Premonition, uh, we're going to be doing a top 10 cards under ten dollars we're not going to be ranking them specifically this is no particular order we're just doing a here's 10 cards under ten dollars that we think are going to work very well in this deck or are just very good examples of either like a style or you know a mechanic or something like that that you can also find much higher priced versions of out there but we wanted to be a little bit more budget conscious uh for this series so so our very first upgrade card is one that was actually suggested by our uh, resident social media guru Josh and that is Gerard Golgari Lichlord. Um, he has also made an Abomination of Land of War deck as I said and uh, made it really sacrifice themed uh, and said that this has been one of the best you know super budget cards that he has added to the deck. It's uh, <laughs> black black green green 2-2 two, two. it gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard and it's a black, green, colorless, sacrifice another creature. Each opponent loses life equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Sacrifice a swamp and a forest. Return it from your graveyard to your hand. So it's already got built-in recursion. It can hit them. It can, it can dome a specific opponent. And it gets huge based on sacrificing creatures and putting them in your yard. So, yeah. Very solid overall card, I think. Yeah, it's nice to have a different angle. Normally, elf decks try to like go really wide yeah. uh, and punch you that way. This this is a nice way to just be like, all right, well, if my board got, if my board got wrathed, uh, you know, here's a giant creature. If I'm out of gas, you know, Gerard makes sure that you don't run out of gas, which is nice. Yeah, it's a very very solid card. Yep. Uh, so our next card is a is an elf staple, and that is a Zuri Renegade Leader. Uh, Colors green green two two legendary elf warrior. You can pay green to regenerate another target elf, and then you can pay two calls and three green, and elf creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain trample till end of turn, uh, which is just overrun. And uh, the Zuri is no stranger to an elf deck. Uh, since it's printing in Scars of Mirrodin, this has been in pretty much every elf deck you can find. It just, it does everything you normally want an elf deck to do. It protects you from wraths, uh, or, you know, non-regeneration wraths. Um, and it just makes sure that all of your small elves can just trample over everything. 
Yeah, and plus value wise, like as far as cost goes, it's it's very solid because it's been reprinted a couple of times since the mm -hmm. original Scars reprinting. Because uh, yeah. you do have it in like uh, Commander twenty fourteen dual decks, and then uh, the anthology as well. So, so they're they're pretty reasonable as far as cost goes as well uh, for, yeah. for a very powerful effect. So, um, the next one I'm going to talk about is going to be another uh, Commander twenty fourteen card that came out in the Elf deck. And that is Sylvan Offering. Uh, this one was one that I think is very solid, especially if you want to go wide in the deck. Um, it's an X and green sorcery. Choose an opponent. You and that player each get an XX green tree folk creature token. So that helps with your, you know, your Gerard and your uh, things like that that care about really big cards. And then you also choose an opponent. You and that player cre each create X one one green elf warrior creature tokens, which. You know, this this deck is all about making a bunch of 1-1 one, one tokens, so very solid. Um, and you give it to another person and you kind of play a little bit of politics there, which I like with this card a lot. Yeah. It's a sweet card. doesn't get played very often. Yeah. Yeah, giving uh, your opponents something is usually considered kind of bad. This, being able to give two different opponents something and being able to kind of play that off of each other or, you know, yeah. play the table a little bit makes it a, a pretty solid choice, so... For sure. Choices are always great. It always adds, you know, a different dynamic to the game. So uh, the next card that we have is a very, very powerful card that's normally pretty good against an elf deck, but is also very good here. And that's Golgari Charm, uh, black, green, instant. Uh, and usually the reason this card is good against elf decks is because one of the first modes that you get to choose is all creatures get negative one, negative one till on a turn. You mm -hmm. probably won't be using that option very often in this deck. But it does have two other modes, uh, Destroy Target Enchantment, or the more important one, Regenerate Each Creature You Control. Yeah, that one's very, very solid for a two-mana instant speed version. Yes. Very versatile, very affordable. You know, obviously cards like Heroic Intervention exist. Um, this card does a very similar thing with additional, uh, you know, not only is it cheaper, but it also has the ability to naturalize something, which is great. And if, you know, the, the time calls for it to give everything negative one, negative one, then you just do it. Yeah, if you're if you're building up and you've got uh, a couple of elf lords on the battlefield mm -hmm. and stuff like that, um, you know you you can definitely you know get through if you're if you're overrunning and you really just need to get that last like little bit over their creatures or something like that. They kill a couple and then you know really get through on that last bit um, stuff like that. So it's it's just a very solid uh, modal card. Um, uh, the next one, which uh, as we talked about, we we really care about having you know a go wide strategy um and having a bunch of creatures that can either tap for mana or you're just going to be attacking with a bunch of little one ones uh is throne of the god pharaoh this is one that i've really enjoyed in aggressive decks more recently and especially go wide aggressive decks uh it's two mana legendary artifact at the beginning of your end step each opponent loses life equal to the number of tapped creatures you control uh, as I said, this we have a lot of creatures in this deck that are going to be tapping for mana or tapping for other abilities, uh, and just even even just ending your turn with like five or six tapped creatures, you're just doming each of your opponents for five or six life is yep. super super good for two mana. In yeah, keyword a, a, being each, yeah, each each, which is just great, just super great for sure. Uh, all right, so the next card we have is an equipment. Um, because one of the things you want to make sure you can do in this deck is actually hit an opponent with lateral, and that is Trailblazer Boots. Two mana, very simple, equipped creature gets non-basic land walk, and it equips for two. Uh, every commander deck has non-basic lands. There is very, very few decks that don't have a non-basic land in it, so this is almost always in a four-player pod. It's going to be able to hit someone. You know, you're yeah. going to make sure that lateral is unblockable in, in nearly every attack. Even monocolor decks are usually running a few different non-basics. Uh, For sure. So, so it's really great. Like, Lathral already has Menace, but just to be sure, to be able to connect with it, it's it's a good option. There, We we also talked a little bit about, like, some of the other options. Again, as as we said at the very beginning of this, there's this is just kind of representative of a theme of making it unblockable or, you know, giving it some sort of better evasion. Because um, mm -hmm. you can put Rogue's Passage or something like that in here. Uh, but that's that's also become very ubiquitous in a lot of decks, so that's an obvious answer. Trailblazer's Boots, another very solid, just, you know, budget-friendly option to throw into a deck like this. Uh, speaking of uh, budget, this one was, uh, like, I knew, I knew it had been reprinted a couple of times, but I was just really surprised when I saw the price of it uh, <laughs> and how, how, 
how inexpensive it is compared to what it was because like the price memory for me was was still pretty high and that's a priest of titania uh it's a one 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 in a green tap add green to your mana pool for each elf on the battlefield uh this was used obviously in a lot of older elf decks and was i know that there's a promo version that's still really expensive because it's it like sure one of the only foil versions of it and if mm -hmm. you ever go and look for the price of that that's that's definitely going to be one of those like wow i can buy this for you know five dollars or like whatever it is now 70 a or 80 dollars yeah a lot <laughs> more a lot more but very solid very good inclusion in almost any elf deck this making a bunch of elf tokens is going to generate generate you a ton of mana uh and also be able to you know uh, just another one of those cards that combines with throne of the god pharaoh to uh tap add mana and deal a little bit more damage to each of your opponents at the end of each step so yeah for sure uh, all right, so our next card is another equipment, and I know we said we weren't putting any of these in order, uh, you know, of the top 10, but for me, this is by far the best card we're adding to the deck, and will probably be one of the best cards in the deck, period, and that is Skull Clamp. Yeah. Uh, I'm very surprised that this card wasn't in the precon. Uh, it's been reprinted multiple times in, in Commander Precons, and that's one mana artifact equipment. Your equip creature gets negative one, or plus one, negative one, and whenever it dies, you draw two cards, and the equip cost is one. So for one mana, once it's on the battlefield, you equip an elf, it'll die, and you'll draw two cards. Yeah, seems and like this, a pretty insane trade. Yeah, this is this has been reprinted, like you said. In uh, I'm looking at it now. It was reprinted in at least one deck in every commander release through 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. Yeah, and then also again in 2020. But it's also been reprinted a few other times beyond yeah. that. So mystery it, booster it, probably. Yeah. Yeah, mystery booster things like that mm -hmm. so it is a fairly inexpensive card it is still sitting at around the five dollar mark at this point at the time of recording uh but it is uh, as you said i i do also agree i think this is probably the number one card out of all the cards we're adding into this deck um yeah. being able to draw those extra two cards is just is so good in a deck like this yep um, and then the next card is another one that, uh, like I said before, similar to Priest of Titania in being able to tap it for more mana, and that's Draga Tree Speaker. And this one I actually think pairs even better with Throne of the God Pharaoh because it is a level up card, uh, but once you get to level 5, all elves you control have tap add 2 green to your mana pool. Uh, so it's a level uh, at just level one through four it's tap add green green to your mana pool level five plus all your elves have it so all those tokens that you're making tap to add and even if you're not utilizing the mana uh, anymore you know like you're still being able to tap and just say okay i'm gonna dome everyone for 10 or whatever uh <laughs> you know obviously lateral has its own ability to be able to dome everyone uh and you gain the life but you know if you if you only have seven or whatever elves you can still uh, with a Throne of the God Pharaoh can still, you know, get in there for a bunch. And just the, the ramp value on that Jiraga Tree Speaker, just being able to dump, you know, just have like 14 mana off of those creatures is so, so good. Yeah, it's, it's a great card. It's it's easily allowed you to just jump up a few turns late in, you know, early in the game and then late game and it just can get Gets out, out of hand. Out of hand really quickly. Yeah. All right, so the last card we have is another hit from Kaldheim which is uh, Skimfar Avenger. This is a colorless and a black 3-1 Elf Berserker. It says whenever another non-token Elf or Berserker uh, you control dies, you draw a card and lose a life. So a little bit of protection, you know, well, not protection, but a little bit of value in case somebody tries to wrath your board. If you happen to have Skull Clamp, all of a sudden you're drawing three cards and losing a life, and that's going to just give you too many cards. You're going to start discarding. Yeah. Uh, this card's really good. I know you're not normally trying to like you know be very punchy with elves, but it's nice that it's a three one. If you can get in there for some chip damage early on, that's nice to be able to do. Uh, and and if somebody tries to sweep your board and you don't have a way to stop it, then at least you're going to draw a few cards off of it, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. There's there's another couple of cards that are you know generally in black that have this sort of ability, not necessarily for elves, but you know they'll cost a few more mana or the mm -hmm. stats will be slightly you know different based on a couple things but yeah just being able to you know whenever a non-token elf dies just being able to draw that card even even losing a life is is definitely worth it in long run for something like this so yeah yeah so that is our upgrades for the elven empire deck from called time 
Uh, make sure to let us know what cards you would add to the deck in the comments below. Uh, and remember to like, share, subscribe. I'm Jeremy Knoll for John Suarez. Thanks for watching.